I'm Tina Schuler. I'm an EMT intermediate. I've been an intermediate for about six or eight years, six to eight years now. I got my basic probably about ten years ago. I work Haver County EMS and have been here for about four and a half, five years. I've also been on the rescue squad for about ten years. Um, my topic is spinal mobilization. With the techniques of spinal mobilization, you need to know, you know, like if you're, what your patient needs. Do they need the long spine board? Know the correct way to, to board the patient. Know how to hold your C-spine. Know how to secure your patient safely and know how to move them. The materials, of course, that you need is your cervical collar, your long spine board with your straps, your head blocks, and your tape that goes across your patient. The purpose of the spinal board is so that your patient doesn't further injure themselves. Move, you know, so they don't further move their spine or their spinal cord. The indications for a patient to have spinal mobilization is complaints of neck or back pain, mechanism of injury, or they're intoxicated, or their neuro exam has any defects or the patient's older than 65 or less than 5, or intoxicated, or another distracting injury, such as maybe they have a broke leg and they don't realize their neck's, or neck's hurt or anything. When you have a patient that's been involved in a certain MOI, they may need evaluation of spinal precautions. That way you can determine if they need to be boarded. Your mechanism of injury is your high energy events or your high falls or your abrupt deceleration crashes like your head on collisions or your rollovers or anything of that sort. You also need to watch out if, for a distracted injury in case they have a family member or someone in the vehicle. They may be concentrating on them and not themselves. Neuro, neuro exam is if there is any local like pain or numbness, abdominal sensation, or paralysis. The ages are like less than five or older than 65, or older than 65, less than five. It's very hard to tell a patient if they're less than five, you know, does your neck and back hurt? Sometimes they don't really realize if their neck or back hurts, they don't really understand. If they're older than 65, most of the time, everything hurts. They don't really know if they fell and hurt something new. For your alertness, they can make sure your board your unconscious patients, of course, or your altered mental status. You never know if they've got a head injury. They could have a head injury and a spinal mobilization injury. Or your intoxication. You always board your patients who have been drinking because they're, they're probably drunk. They don't realize that they're hurt. Distracted injuries, you know, like I said before, if they've got a broke leg, they may be concentrating on the leg that's broke instead of, oh, my neck hurts or my lower back hurts or something in that sort. Your point of tenderness, when you're palpate, palpating your patient, you know, you want to palpate around the neck and up to the lower base of the skull all the way down to the lower back. If they have point of tenderness of any part of that, you automatically want to board them. Patient, you're placing your patient on the spine board, you can do the log roll, you can do a sit and slide, or you can do a standing takedown. Just depends on your situation and your call. And for a review, just remember that the person that has the C-spine is, of course, the one that's in control. Whoever you designate to put holding C-spine, you always want to make sure it's on their account. And then always make sure you check your PMS before and after you board, because if you board and then you check it, then you don't know if you have it before you board them. And also make sure you fully secure your patient before moving. You know, you always want to check and make sure that your patient is secure. You can't 
always rely on everybody to make sure that your patient is secure because what if one day someone doesn't strap that patient down and you pick them up and they fall off. Then they have another injury and that's your fault. And that's it for the slideshow. So I'll have my partner come and assist me boarding the patient. collar on still you need to hold C spine. Just because the C collar is on doesn't mean you can let go. And when you board you can only take off one side of the strap. That way you're not worrying with the strap trying to take them both off. You can place the board beside the patient. Most of the time you have more help than just that. Do the log roll. We'll place his hand above his head on this side and one across his chest. Okay, one, two, three. Always look for back blood or any distracting injuries there. should normally be color coded so you can't get them mixed up. Please have explanatory on the where it goes where. Once you have your straps on your patient, you'll have the head blocks. Different services have different head blocks. We have these certain head blocks that we put. And then we lift up the patient's neck just a little bit so we can slide the blocks in. And then we secure the patient's head blocks with tape. You have a head strap and a chin strap that you place on the patient. And then you double check your PMS, make sure, you know, it's still stable and everything, and then you load your patient. That's it. Thank you. Anybody have any questions?